It's the, it's the guitar dance. Welcome to the Guitar Dads Podcast, a podcast for guitar dads by guitar dads. This week, Noel Gallagher suggested I write this intro on paper to remember it. Roland, Fender, and Toman think prices are broken and need to be fixed. And someone wants much more than a nickel back for their song. We're so good, we've already copyrighted this pod before recording. This week on the Guitar Dads Podcast. Now, two guys who don't put the intellectual in intellectual property, Matt and Dave. (laughs) Hello everybody, I'm Matt. And I'm Dave, and welcome to another pod. We definitely How's don't put the intellectual. Doing? We definitely don't put the intellectual in property. <laughs> we definitely don't put the intellectual. <laughs> <laughs> and Noel Gallagher actually reached out and told you to write down stuff. Well, I'm impressed. Absolutely. And you know who got upset about it? Liam. Liam. Well, here we are, <laughs> episode 27. Yeah, episode 27. Thank you for wow. listening. Thank you, everybody. It's so good. We love yeah, you. you guys are awesome. We really we love seeing we love seeing the downloads because we know you guys are enjoying the uh, the content and the show, and, and we really appreciate it. And you guys really really make it for us. So uh, thanks again, as we say every week. You're why we keep doing this week after week. So thank. Well, I mean, you. I, that that's a bit of a, a jump to a conclusion, there, isn't it? Well, I mean, it is right. If people didn't listen, <laughs> would we do it? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe we would, but I don't think we would. No, I don't think we would at all. No. So thank you all to the listeners. We're just joking around. But check us out on uh, Instagram, at Guitar Dads Pod. Uh, we posted a number of new uh, pieces of content up there this week. So check that out. Yes. Uh, and also check us out on Twitter, at Guitar Dads Pod. And, and search hard for us on YouTube. We're kind of hard to find. Just type in Guitar Dads and look for our logo. We're on there. We're out there somewhere. Oh, there's some so videos. Check them out. Yeah. Yeah, please do. Check those videos out. So what are we getting into today, Dave, in our news and notes section? Let's get into some news and notes. All right, first thing, let's get right into this Noel Gallagher thing. You actually yeah. sent me this. You, this is kind of funny. Uh, apparently, yeah. uh, what uh, Noel Gallagher forgetting lyrics? Tell me about this. So apparently he was performing. I don't know where he was performing. I forget. Do you remember, Dave? Uh, I, I totally forget. <laughs> Anyway, apparently he was performing, and he was performing like one of his f- famous songs. I don't remember this article because I sent it to you a few days ago, but um, yeah, like he like really stumbled over the lyrics and just forget. It. And then he said he has a, this is he actually said like I'm having a hard time with this, but you know whatever. I I mean this this isn't a huge story to me, but I think it's kind of funny because it's Noel Gallagher. Oh yeah, I think and, it's um, I think it's hysterical, and it's like um, you know, it's kind of funny. So if I look at this, um, let's see. Now, see, yeah, Liam, he says, Liam, yeah, he Liam said, would have, Liam would have stormed off the stage. He right? says and, and he disgust. forgets lyrics while performing, and he said, "I just have to make shit up." <laughs> <laughs> now you remember a Dave Matthews concert we went to back in the day, and he screwed up twice. Oh yeah, I mean, look, artists screw stuff up all the time, artists right? And lyrics are time. hard to remember. And I can tell you, as a singer that sings in a band where we do about forty songs in a in a gig like it's hard to remember all the all the lyrics so right? then i'm gonna ask you let me ask you then the question because you're the perfect person to answer this um having to know all these songs right so yeah it you, you now you see a lot of a lot of artists these days with uh with like hidden prompters how do you feel about that and wh- what's your take i think it's totally fine i do too i have no issues with it so this is the thing right dave i think we were talking about like shorts on stage on one of the one of the things and i was like i don't wear shorts on stage um um and so that's a big thing where people were cover band people get in arguments about it the other big argument is ipads and music stands on stage right and so and it's funny because people are always posting pictures of big acts with the teleprompters that are built in they look like monitors but they're really teleprompters you know Stephen Tyler's been doing it for years all the oh, big he's been doing that for years all, all the yeah. big acts that, that have like big catalogs have been doing this for years and you know I think cover bands that go through a lot of material I think if I think it's all about the performance if you can if you can perform 
and um, it doesn't take away from the performance and what you're doing, then I have no problem with it at all. Yeah, I think it's a problem if you're up there not really engaging the crowd and just reading off a teleprompter. But so what's the what's the argument? What what's the argument from people that are against the prompter on the stage then? And are the well iPad? for that reason like, they just think the... it doesn't look professional and they think it just doesn't look look good. And like I say, I think it's all about if you're able to to you know perform and not like stare at a iPad the whole time, then I think you're doing quite well. So I, I try not to use, I use it as like a guide where I'll just glance down at it, make sure I know the first words of a song and that kind of thing. So I make sure I don't get lost. That's yeah, kind of how I use it. But I still, you know, maybe I'll as part of your outfit, as long as you're not going to wear shorts, maybe part of your outfit is a shirt that says you try and memorize 40. Songs. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when I was younger, I didn't use it. Now, as I get older, I'm like, you know, it's it's the technology's there because when I was younger, we didn't have iPads. Let's just put it that way. When I was playing gigs, I actually would have loved an iPad when I was in my twenties at all those gigs, right? But um, no. And in fact, cover bands had Ataris on stage when we were kids. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so. So that's what it is, right? Like, I think it's good technology, and if you can utilize it in a way that isn't crazy obvious, and I don't think it's a problem. So Noel, like, yeah. you know, like too bad Noel, you know, like. <laughs> I, I, I think it's everybody, funny. Everybody, all these it art, is funny how he just admits them. it. Yeah, exactly. And remember back in the day, like the first, one of the first, like at least from our, 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 our younger generation, when back in the day, the first person that I ever remember using anything was Michael Stipe, right? And he had a music stand. Oh, yeah, yeah. And people, people gave him crap for that. I remember it. But it's like that, they, at that time, REM had still already had a massive catalog. And, and how do you remember? And if bands are, are touring as much as they do and they're putting in – and taking out different songs into their set list, how can you expect them to remember everything every night, all night? You know? Oh, of I mean, course. You know, the first yeah. big artist I saw that had like lyrics and stuff in front of them um, on stage was Billy Joel. He had like a massive oh, yeah. binder on on his piano, right? Because, I mean, talk about the catalog that, that, that Billy Joel has. And he, he, I think he has like chords in it and he has like some lyrics in it and keys and that kind of stuff. So he understands what what he's doing and remembers how to play these songs. Right. So, I mean, look, so he literally had I a catalog on stage. He, he literally did. I, <laughs> <laughs> it was like a, um, you know, like a Jay Peterman catalog. Um, <laughs> but this is funny, Dave, like Noel, um, forgets the songs, but, um, you know, Liam Gallagher's probably been trying to, is probably intentionally trying to forget all the songs. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I'm telling you, if he did, he actually forgot Liam would actually just storm off the stage. <laughs> All right, so what do we got next? Uh, What's up on next on the list? <laughs> uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is putting up a reverb. Oh yeah, this is interesting. Store? It's like a memorabilia. True. Yeah, they're putting up a store on Reverb that's like a memorabilia store, and oh, cool. so it's kind of interesting, right? Like, um, so the first thing that was up there was just like a bunch of like interesting signed things by major acts, like signed guitars, stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. I'm gonna. I'm just googling it. So I guess now the obvious uh, the obvious question that our, our our subscribers and listeners have is, what are you buying? Yeah. No, I'm not into like the memorabilia and stuff like that. Like that's not like to me that's not like a like a big deal. But um, you know, it, would it be cool to have some of this stuff? We we had this conversation before, Dave. Where you we were did asking have this me, conversation before. You we, were asking we, just, me. we decided though, you aren't into memorabilia unless it's something slash. Yeah, I mean, if it's a slash mm-hmm. was doing this, then then we could do it, but. Yeah, there's a bunch of cool stuff up here, like guitars that are signed. Um, there's all kinds of cool. There's Les Paul. There's a bunch of Les Pauls. A- a- Epiphone signed by twenty. And oh, this here's one. An Epiphone Les Paul signed by twenty nineteen inductees of the Rock Hall. Ooh. Um, and what's that going for? Um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I it's just um, they don't have it up yet. Yeah, I don't, I don't think up. it's launched yet. Um, who else? The Moody Blues, a Gibson Les Paul Studio autographed by the Moody Blues. It's basically like all kinds of Gibsons that are defaced with. Um, <laughs> with here's one: a '67 Flying V autographed by My Chemical Romance. My Chemical Romance is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, no, it's, uh, I don't think they are, but maybe there's some of their memorabilia. Oh, oh, yeah, that's true. There is, there is stuff. Because recently, there. Joan, they, there is memorabilia. They just, you're right. You're they right. just they're doing a whole Joan Jet thing, and she's not in the Rock and Roll. Shamefully, is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But apparently, one of her like legendary guitars is is in is now in the well a replica, but 
is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So. <laughs> There's a comment here that says, so this is a 67 Flying V autographed by My Chemical Romance, and somebody says, I think that that V would be worth more if it wasn't signed by them. <laughs> 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 Good point. Because it That's is. It's like def- it's like defaced. The sixty-seven, you know, V would be worth something, but it's like defaced by all these. Yeah, signatures. you're right. Absolutely. So, that, so that's kind of my point on this. Is like, yeah, but it is interesting that Reverb's getting into this kind of stuff with memorabilia and Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, Reverb. I mean, I don't want to get into the Reverb thing, but um, you know, Reverb's got to do its thing to um, keep the revenues up now that it's owned by Etsy. So. You know, it's what it is. It's it's kind of interesting. So, anyway, yeah, let's move sure on. You, make sure you, make sure you check out our uh, scroll back on our Instagram account. And look for our uh, free verb meme. Oh with, yeah, uh, John Cusack, <laughs> John Cusack from Say Anything, or John Cusack the pedal builder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that you exact know there's a guy one. named John Cusack called Cusack pedals. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Anyway, yeah, it is true. Anyway, so what's going on? What's going on with Nickelback, Dave? So Nickelback, uh, Nickelback, I feel like hasn't really been in the, in the you know, in the, at the forefront of the music scene for a long time. But <laughs> they are, they apparently are in, in, in a legal battle for with against some, some. I forget the guy's the lead singer's name, but he, he is now he, he was in a band, Snow ba- Snowblind Revival, I guess a number of years ago. And uh, Ooh, Chad the, Kroger, the, the, Chad, yeah. So no, not <laughs> the uh, so so this dude is is claiming that he wrote a, a song also called Rockstar. Oh. And it's very similar. Now, I'm not usually you you, you see these copyright suits and you, you kind of you listen to both songs and you kind of yeah. go, hmm, yeah, I can see. Yeah, definitely. I get I, I get where they're coming from. Yeah. This, I don't know if you've listened to it, but to me, it's they're 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 very unique. So now apparently a judge said this can go forward. It's enough. There's enough in the case. So we'll see where this ends up. But well, this is this is one of the this is one of the many things that <laughs> Rick Beato went berserk on on a bunch of his videos. <laughs> oh, yeah. You remember there was the one with um, Stairway to Heaven. That was the the yes. latest huge one. That was the that was the most recent big one. Yeah. And I think Zeppelin had to pay on. Did Zeppelin lose that case? Mm, good question. Good question. Did they? Sick. Let Let's check it out. I think they did. I think I think they lost. And what do you remember the name of the band? I, you know, I don't remember the name of the band. I should know all these things, but I really don't. Oh, geez, um, you're supposed to know all this stuff. While you're top searching, of your head. I know. While you're searching, I'll give you a couple other notable. Oh, oh ones it's one. Are... So the latest news was from October 20. They have won the appeal of the copyright case over uh, of Stairway to Heaven. So they oh, won. So, the, so I, apparently, it's, oh, it's probably it's probably still tied up in the courts. Oh, I bet um, that's going to go on for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the final possible legal challenge. So yeah, so this this is it looks like they won an appeal and the appeal could keep keep going. But here's the thing, right? This thing happened in 2014 and it's been going on kind of ever since then. They won the case in 2016, it was revived on appeal in 2018 and then it was upheld. And um yeah, so this is a big thing. Um yeah, they wanted a you know lot what's of money. interesting to me yeah. though with these things, it's so these are always very interesting cases to me because they're so it's very. I mean, it's kind of subjective, right? I mean, oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, it, it, and then it yeah. depends on who you got on a jury and and oh and yeah, who's it, it's like to to and then you know with us, I mean, we we would we we love Zeppelin and you know we we don't want to see. You know, we we want to see them come out in the you know as winner in this obviously, but sometimes if you did now you listen to the to the the song in contention, right? It kind of I you can kind of see it's, the point. It's similar, yeah. In this, yeah. So the name of the band is Spirit. Yeah, um, Spirit. I claim this, it. and if you listen to the intro to this uh, Spirit song, it is it's a little bit similar. But Jimmy it's a little pa- similar. But Jimmy Page is like, look, you know, like you know, we don't we don't know, you know, no. Like we we don't know the song, so yeah. But the, you know what? Too they, they were they were back then. They were probably so high they had no idea that they were actually like you know they probably heard the thing and and it just got into Jimmy's head. And next thing you know, he's he's putting it down on his guitar. So I, who knows? Yeah. But. So anyway, anyway, but these these copyright things, I think it does get a little bit out of control because there seems it seems like the courts aren't super strict about this. 
And in, 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 in the real problem with it, and this is what Rick Beato and a bunch of other YouTubers and artists were complaining about when this stuff came out was basically like, where does it end? Like you can't copyright a chord progression. Right. Exactly. And that's right. a, And there's been a lot of cases, you know, I think like there's one of them so was so many chords. People. One of them was like the Katy Perry case went one of her songs. And yeah, it's like, it's like, wait a minute, that's a chord progression. That's not, you know, that's not the, that's not the time. It's not the um, rhythm, you know, it's not these things. Like, how can they actually do it? So it gets really um, sketchy with these really copyright messy. cases. So anyway, well, but a couple yeah, of they're going to keep happening. Too. But, you know, I don't feel, oh, so, no, I, they, I don't feel so bad they, for Nickelback, let's just say. I don't feel <laughs> bad for Nickelback. Now, I do feel bad for the for the one I do want to bring up is, do you remember recently, or more a few years ago, but not not too, too long, um, Sam Smith and Tom Petty. Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. Because Sam yeah. Smith stay with me. And won't back down. And those, again, kind of similar. So I can see, yeah, I a can little definitely bit similar. see where Petty was yeah. coming from. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, then, and the other famous one was was Huey Lewis in the news and the ghost, uh, Ghostbusters oh, theme. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. I didn't know about that one. You know the Ghostbusters theme that goes, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah. who are you going to call? That is, they, they won the case. They sued. Huey Lewis in the news, their song, I Need a New Drug. I Need a New Drug. Do, 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 do. When the world made me oh. sick. That song, they they sued and won against the Ghostbusters. They sued and won, wow. Yeah, anyway. But Good you're right, this stuff is so subjective, it's kind of wildness. So, anyway. What else you, we got? You, know, we you, just, we, you just want to... You just want to kind of like kill these things off and just and 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 you know put them to bed and be dead. But speaking of back from the dead, that's a really bad <laughs> nice transition. Trans- nice segue. Bad dude. transition. One of bad, our favorite bands. Transition. One of our favorite bands, Hailstorm, has some new music out, and let me just say, wow, <laughs> it does kind of knock your <laughs> socks off. Wow. Yeah, it kind of yeah, does. Pan- the pandemic has done good. Yeah, the pandemic for has this done band. well for the, them. These guys, the, this this band, Hailstorm, if you're not familiar, we've talked about Hailstorm plenty of times on this podcast. I feel like Hailstorm's a big band now, Dave. They're, they're a pretty big band. Yeah. you got to know who they are. But Lizzie Hale, one hell of a singer. I, I don't, I mean, for, for people that know the band well, certainly gets, uh, you know, certainly gets recognition. But a lot of people really need to listen to her because she is definitely one of the top female rock singers probably I, I mean, ever probably ever yeah yeah, yeah. um she like she's just got like one of her pipes. one of her idols is ann wilson from heart and i'll tell you what she's she gives ann will i mean ann Another wilson killer, back yeah. in the day ann wilson still sounds good but back in the day ann wilson was like a force to be reckoned with and hey you know lizzie hale's kind of like that she's kind of amazing so she i'm is. really looking What'd forward to this song? i love it i think it's like classic hailstorm stuff i'm really into this I, I can't wait for the album. Um, it's very exciting. So really excited very to exciting. see. This is, you know, we called this, Dave, about, you know, when we started this podcast that all these artists are going to use all this quarantine time to write some amazing material. And it's, you know, it's trickling out, I would say. Some artists have already released the albums. Um, and it's trickling out. And we're going to start to see even more from all our favorite artists. So yeah, it's really awesome. It really, I think it really speaks to, like, look what they can really do when they have time. Because oh, half of these bands are just constantly touring, and yeah, and I'm not saying that's affecting the material, but certainly when you're sitting around your house and all you really do have is time, yeah, and you're probably being inspired by some dark things, and that's kind of the hailstorm sound. It's true. It's true. You know, I mean, you can't help but put out this stuff. So yeah, great song. It's called "Back from the Dead." Check it out. It's really it's awesome. It's really great. I love it. So excited right, stuff as we from wrap hailstorm. up. Yeah. All right, let's wrap up a couple of other new quick news notes here. Uh, Bush and STP are announcing a, a fall he- co-headline tour. How do you feel about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, the STP guy that they got to replace, um, you know, Wyland is is you know he's good, but he sounds like Wyland. It's like a journey. He sounds exactly like it's him, like a journey great. thing for me, Dave. I'm not gonna lie. So <sighs> anyway, and Bush like nah, never was a huge fan, fan of Bush, but they are cool. They kind of rock. Yeah, Bush kind of rocked. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a little. This is more like a nostalgia tour to me. It, but, it, this know. is a total nostalgia tour, absolutely. What else? Uh, a couple of the notes. Uh, more people, obviously, you know, people getting out there and things are going to happen. And people are uh, more artists are testing positive for COVID, but they're all okay. Uh, Jonathan Davis from Corn 
And I guess the uh, lead singer from Pop Evil. Um, okay. Last week we talked about the the dude from one of the guitarists in Blackberry Smoke. So that's you know, right. It's happening, but they, they, people are people are okay, and they're still and they're getting back. Yeah, it's going shows are happening. Yeah, you know, this is happening. It's going to be like professional sports, right? People are going to go out for a couple weeks. You yeah. know, get sick, come back. <laughs> hopefully, no come one back. gets. Hopefully, everybody you know stays safe and you know hopefully is getting vaccinated and you know hopefully everything's going all right for them. Right. Um. But you know what? What it is? This is this is just going to be the this is the re- reality now. It's just like you know your this favorite is sports life. This yeah, is just it. your favorite sports player might not be there. The game that you have to go to, you when you have tickets to a show, it could be canceled because the artist, um, you know, came down with the Delta. So you know, you just never know these days. So anyway, yeah. Or if you're like LeBron James, you just came down with, um, you know, you're a fraud and you're lazy. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Hey. Shots it, fired at LeBron. Shots fired at LeBron. Well, we're, we're Boston folk here, so we really yeah, don't we don't really care this way. So anyway, um, you want to talk about yeah, Steel well, Panther? Yeah, Steel Panther. So what? Uh, who's the 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 former bassist Lexi Fox? Right, Lexi left? Fox. <laughs> why did he leave? <laughs> I have no idea why he left. But he left, and now they're apparently auditioning for bassists like through their fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they basically put an open audition out, like send us <laughs> videos of you playing bass, and if you got what it takes to play with Steel Panther. And so this is an interesting thing I wanted to say about Steel Panther. I I am a fan of Steel Panther. I still like them quite a bit. I think they're hilarious, but they're not everybody's cup of tea, right? No. Well, well, there's two things that I like about them. One, I think they're hilarious. Two, I think the musicianship and the songwriting is awesome, right? Um, because, um, you know, Satchel, who's the guitar player, is just, he's a, he's one of the greatest guitar players around uh, in this kind of genre right now. He's he's just awesome. Um, and I, if he wasn't uh, in a band like that, he would be getting so much more recognition for what... For well, what maybe, maybe not. I mean, he's done quite well with, with Steel Panther. But I do got to say, and again, we're not a political podcast... <laughs> I got to say, like, I think they might be having a little bit of a hard time in this kind of I, I think people I think the joke might be wearing off is what I'm going to say. Hmm. I think they're a polarizing band where, you know, yes, everybody understands that they're a parody band and they're not they don't really act like this and talking about hookers and talking about having sex with women and, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, like, you know, like. It's not like people understand that it's a parody, but I think people are are also like, well, you know, that was an era that we're happily we want to happily leave kind of behind us, you know, the eighties. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so like in terms of the excess and in terms of how women were treated and all that stuff, right? So, so I but think that's the, that's their whole shtick. That's their but that's pattern. their whole shtick, right? So, yeah. so I think that's the thing is I think the joke might be getting. The only reason I say this is because just today. I was looking through a list of local shows, Dave, and they usually play at least once a summer. They usually play the um, the Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom. Yeah, up in New Hampshire. Yeah, and they're playing like a much smaller bar down down in Hampton Beach called the uh, Wally's, which isn't a small place, but it's not. It's maybe half the size of Hampton. I, mean, I don't know if that's because of COVID or it's because you know maybe Steel Panther is falling out of uh, favor a little bit. I don't know. So it's kind ah, of in, it's kind of interesting to see what happens with Steel Panther. Now they're they're bass player. They, they they're going to keep going. I'm sure they have great followings down south and on the west coast and stuff. But it'll be interesting to see what happens with Steel Panther. But Steel Panther. I mean, but they still get some classic great stuff. And the guitar playing alone and in, is incredible. So like, oh, the guitar playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, it's is just pretty, out, it's pretty out, top. It's outrageous how good he is. Yeah. So um, anyway, yeah. So. What do you think, Dave? Is that the news and notes? That is. That wraps up our news and notes. And we'll, let's uh, move on to our uh, our gear, uh, kind of a gear segment, gear-related. Um, an interesting story came out. Why don't you tell everybody about it? Oh, yeah. So interesting news came out. And this has apparently been going on. So this is this is news coming out of Europe. So, there was a, so Germany has come out and fined uh, Toman, who was like a massive retailer in Germany, basically Germany and all of Europe, for music instruments and and everything, they're basically like the guitar center of Europe. Um, I think they're mainly like a mail order thing, but they're like, maybe they're like the Sweetwater of Europe. But I think they're even bigger than than Sweetwater. So they were fined along with Boss, um, not Boss. Well, what is it? Um, what is it? Roland. What's a par- yeah, it's Roland. 
So Ron, which is the parent company of Boss, parent company, yeah. Uh, basically, all the heavy, the big people in the industry. So it's Roland, Fender, Yamaha, and Fender yeah. were fined along with Toman and then these other re- really big U- European retailers. And what they're fined for, they're fined a big bucks, like twenty something million dollars. I guess for them, it's not big bucks, but. It's still oh, like 20, it's still yeah, like twenty one million euro, which in my quick uh, conversion calculation would be uh, twenty four point five. Oh wow, very dollars. good, Dave. Yeah, so I mean that's not big bucks in the <laughs> scheme know, of these the companies. Today? That you know, I mean, like that's not huge dollars in the scheme of these companies, but it's enough to send a message like stop this. So basically, what they got fined for doing is what they call in Europe price um, fixing, and essentially what the price of fixing amounts to when you read about this is basically enforcing an MSRP, right? And a manufacturer's suggested retail price. So in the United States, this happens all the time, right? In, 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 in the U.S., a company will say to like Guitar Center, this is, we, we don't want you to sell kind of lower than this price. Um, I think they are allowed. That's what happened. That's yeah. why when you go on Guitar Center's website and you go to use your 15% coupon and it basically lists every exactly. brand that they sell that doesn't qualify. Exactly. And that's also why for, for certain things like pedals, as an example, you can go to Guitar Center, you can go to Sweetwater, you can go to any retailer, you know, and it's going to be the same price, right? Because Because they're not really allowed to undercut if they want to keep the relationships going with these with these pedal company, with all these companies, right? Not just the pedal, right. all all the kind of you know the manufacturers, the suppliers, but in 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 Europe, in Germany in particular, and I think it's all of the EU, and I think it's also true in the UK. They can't do this. They can't say to a, a retailer, "You have to keep your price at this certain level, or we're going to retaliate against you." Meaning, we're not going to give you as much supply. We're going to give you less favorable credit terms. All this kind of stuff. Right. Um, and that's kind of everything to retailers. So the retailers are going to do it. They're going to say, fine, I'll, I'll do whatever you want. And so apparently this is illegal in Europe and it's a problem um, of the collusion. Now, this isn't collusion. This is where we're getting into like economic kind of legal business stuff, Dave, here. But like collusion that's illegal in the U.S. is co- is companies kind of collaborating with each other and setting a price. Like if all the pedal companies got together and said, all right, guys, you can't sell an overdrive. Everybody has to sell an overdrive pedal for 300 bucks. I don't care if it's a tube screamer. I don't care what the hell it is. It's 300 bucks. Um, You know, so that's, that would be illegal if they all kind of colluded to that because it would raise the prices for all the, all the consumers. That's basically what's and people going. would still pay three hundred dollars for a tube. But we screen. do it all the time anyway. Yeah. So anyway, it, not like it would matter because we'd buy it anyway. But it is true. Yeah, like exactly. you can go and you can get things on sale. You can do all this stuff. And and um, you know, in in Europe, they take that protect protection to the next level, and they can't even set like an MSRP over there. So it's so it's real inter and that's what they're busted for for basically setting and enforcing MSRPs. Just an interesting tidbit for you all guys to well, chew. Well, on. the other, well, the other bigger piece of this, though, to me, and this is why this goes a little bit deeper, is they they were threatening the retailers with you know restricting supply and other things. That's penalties. what I'm saying. So, yeah, no, that's exactly yeah. right. I mean, right. they were so, saying like you you will set this price or you're gonna you're gonna pay the the consequence, right? So, but like I said, it, that's essentially how it works in the in the U.S. You know, is you basically have to do this to keep your relationships going, right? And it's just, it just an MSRP standard, and everybody kind of accepts yeah, that. Yeah, but that's just the way. But in Europe, business is done in the U.S. Yeah. It's just an interesting thing that in Europe this doesn't happen, right? Um, it's not I allowed. It's I, I would have thought I, I'm not a you know you you obviously have a business background, so you understand. But I I wouldn't I, that actually kind of surprises me. I thought MSRP was more of a concept accepted elsewhere too. Well, I thought so as well until I started reading about this stuff. I had heard about this from a from an earlier lawsuit, but a lot of retailers are in in Europe are getting hit with this hard, you know? And um like I said, it isn't huge dollars um for them, but unless they clean up the rack, they're just going to continue to get fined. So right. I think it's interesting and I I think it has something to do with especially this like music industry stuff like the music gear industry. I think a lot of the stuff in Europe is very expensive. It's more a little bit more expensive than it is here and sometimes uh, depending on where it's made. And so, I mean, obviously the U S makes tons of stuff, so it costs a little bit more to get over there. So 
and they have more taxes and they have all this stuff than we have. So it's real interesting. And I think that's why they just want to protect the consumers. Good good for consumers, bad for companies and retailers. (laughs) And the thing, the interesting thing is this was going on pre pandemic too, with the demand that like skyrocketed for this kind of stuff during the pandemic, you know, you could only imagine what it would, what the impact it would have had, but yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, interesting, crazy story. And it's, it's kind of, it's, you know, it's interesting to see some of the, the bigger, the bigger names involved in this. So, yeah, I mean, when Toman's doing it, they're like the biggest yeah. name in town in Europe. Right. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a big deal. Um, so I don't know, Dave, I don't know if this means you're going to be able to get your Harley Benton for lower price. Well, Harley Benton's there is their house, um, their house That's brand. Their house. Yeah. So I guess they mind. can do whatever they want with it. But, um, but yeah, so it's it's really interesting. So anyway, so that's what's yeah. going on. So that's kind of big news that came out. The other big news is you got a new pedal, Dave. Tell us about it. I did, and I'm I will. I keep saying I'm going to put out reviews, but you know, as as the guitar dads live their lives, the guitar dads live their lives, and lives get busy when you have kids. And those of you with kids that's out right. there kind of get it. All yeah, of it's kind of true. You know, your summer's taken up. Anyway, yeah, so we, we, well, let's we talk about well, Dave. Content. You know what, Dave? Let's talk about that for a second because it is true. Like when you're a guitar dad, sometimes you get a pedal in the mail and you're like, oh man, like I got to do this. I got practice. I got this. I got, yeah, I got to do, take my kids here. And it's like, and you, you don't even get to play, to play it for like a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So I finally, so I've been, I'm a, I, I, uh, you know, I've said this on the podcast before. I'm a big, uh, big telly uh, fan, big, big fan of the sound of the telly. Uh, and yes, over are. the last couple of years, I've really started getting into Brad Paisley and I just love his playing and, yeah, his, he's and his tone and he's, he's incredible. Um, so I finally, I caved in and I bought the Paisley drive deluxe cause I really like the sound of the, the Paisley drive, which is his, his signature pedal that, that he did with Wampler, Brian Wampler. And, um, yeah, I love Wampler and pedals. the Paisley drive deluxe is, I guess a combine is a, is a dual, it's a dual pedal. Uh, the on the other side of this thing is the the old underdog pedal, which is a Wampler uh, production that he had he had done um, to raise money, I guess, for a, a friend that had cancer. And then Brad had been using it, but he wanted to put in he wanted to kind of get it re released, and because of the whole, you know, I guess the I don't know whether it was the the emotional attachment or whatever he, that that Wampler didn't want to do that, so he kind of re re kind of recreated it in this this dual pedal. So now on one side, you get the underdog on the other side, you get the Paisley deluxe. So explain it. What's the underdog? What kind of pedal? So the is underdog that? is a distortion pedal. Oh, it's, it's a distortion. One of distortion pedals. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And this, the, on this side, it's got a three band EQ um, and you gain in level, obviously, but you can, the, the interesting thing with this is you can run, you can switch it. So you can run the underdog, into the paisley or you can run the paisley into the underdog and it's just a simple switch but you actually do have to change the cables out which is easy but obviously and what flavor is the paisley drive as an overdrive i mean it's it, is it its own thing it's it's kind of its own well i don't know i don't i don't you know it is kind of its own thing it's got um i don't really know how to describe it it's got but it, it to me it has the the very like you know what you expect to hear out of like a, a you know, a country telly sound, nice. you know, so it's, it really, and it does it and it does that sound well. Nice. Um, it, you know, like it, so I don't, I mean, when you say flavor, I don't know what you mean in comparison to another pedal. Yeah. Like, is it, is it like a, is it more like a tube screamer? Is it a treble? No, it's not. It's, is it, it more it, of like know, a treble a, boosty? Is it a mid push? It's it's a little bit yeah it's good it's got it's a little bit more of a, a mid push but I wouldn't I would not compare it to a tube screamer okay, at all, right, all right. I mean to me to my ears but then again I'm not you know I'm not, I don't have the the the, the experience and the trained ears in this stuff but yeah 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 um yeah no it's a, it's a it's a good sound but I I and again guitar dad busy schedule I barely play the thing that I've had uh, for a week yeah but so but you like you like it so far so you play it into like really a like completely it. clean amp right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't really played around with it, so I because Brad I plays, play. Brad plays into the Doctor Z's, which He's are got essentially, the Z's. which are essentially like edge of breakup type of amps, right? Yeah, sparkling yeah. clean edge of breakup type of stuff. And he's got such a great sound. So. Yeah, I mean, amazing, amazing. Like go, and like yeah, go watch you some have of a his pedal YouTube pedal. videos. Amazing. Say that again. I said go watch some of his YouTube videos. Like go oh, watch his, like go watch his play. um. Is like Austin City Limits. It's, it's it's the playing is like off the chain. He's just so. insane. 
But now you have speaking speaking of a um, uh, ah yeah, mids, you have a pedal coming on the way. The pedal, yes. The the gas continues here in Guitar Dad Land. Um, <laughs> gas is never the ending. Gas never ends. So yeah, so I got a, a J Rocket Archer uh, icon on the way, the gold one, um, which I guess is the icon. What's what icon is? So anyway, so yeah, I'm going on like a little bit of a clon journey here because I had the I have the Tumnus. We talked about this one a while back when we talked about our favorite overdrive pedals. I have the 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 Tumnus, which is the Wampler kind of clon clone, and it is an incredible pedal. Dave's got one, right, Dave? Yeah, but now you wanted to. The reason you wanted one because you have now two rigs going, right? So you have yeah, because I got my home playing rig, which is the Silver Jubilee and a bunch of different pedals, a bunch of overdrive pedals that I use. And then, and I don't have like a clone clone in that kind of array of overdrive pedals. I have a tube screamer. I have kind of different flavors of tube screamer. And then I have the, the JHS morning glory, which is glorious through the, um, silver Jubilee as well. And I, I liked it. So, so, and I've said this before, I like to play overdrives into, cause I love the dirty Marshall sound. So I do like a dirty, I would say a crunch. I don't do like a heavy distorted Marshall, but I'll do like a nice crunch Marshall sound and then layer the overdrives on it. And I think it sounds so good. So, yeah. And the does. telly sounds great through it too, Dave, the, the, um, the Squire classic vibe through the Jubilee with some overdrive. It just sounds so good. So. The Vlasic vibe. The Vlasic vibe, exactly right. Check out our memes. Check out check out our memes. But yeah, so that's coming. And then I don't know, Dave. I think we might have to take a field trip and pick up some more clon clones. Yeah, we are going to take a field trip, and this will be exciting because we will talk about this, and we may even uh, we may even have some other news too uh, after afterwards. But we are going to take a trip to this uh, this kind of boutique. This, well, it is boutique uh, pedal shop. Called the the pedal shop. The pedal Spelled shop. Pedal shoppy. The pedal shoppy. Right? Yeah. yeah. So this, this is, is a cool in, place. Uh, that has... You know, local to us in Massachusetts. Yeah, we're gonna uh, go down there. Yeah, it's actually we're located. Check them out. It's located in Plymouth, Massachusetts, next to Plymouth Plantation, next to the which May... is where the pilgrims. It, it actually is literally down the street from where the Mayflower is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. So Dave and I are going to go there and maybe pick up some more clone clones and other petals, and we're going to have a fun time. And the other thing that's happening. Which did you, well, hold on one second. I don't think the I don't think the I don't think our listeners really know. But did you know the first like tube screamerish sound came came from an event that the Pilgrims actually ran? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The other thing, and there's another very special trip that I'm taking um, coming up that we'll talk about more on the next podcast. Yes, go ahead. Just stab me in the heart. Do it this week. Do it next. week. <laughs> We'll leave you with that cliffhanger. And- We're going to leave you with that cliffhanger. <laughs> and I think that takes us to the end of this week's Guitar Dads podcast. So thank you again for uh, listening. Please subscribe. really helps us out. Check us out on Instagram at Guitar Dads Pod. Uh, search for us deeply on YouTube and find us and, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the content. And please subscribe. Also helps us out there. And, uh, yeah, any suggestions for the show, we'd love to hear comments. And, uh, yeah, you you guys really help us drive the show, so uh, we really appreciate you. Uh, Any last words for our uh, listeners? I think that's it. Catch you guys on the flip. 